Hey everybody, this is Julian from Connected NICU and here's another Father's Friday. Um, if I look a little tired, I kind of am. Just had a really long day and actually I just finished taking an online exam that just like beat the brakes off me. It took me about two and a half hours um, of finishing that up. For those of you who don't know, I'm going back to school, working full time. Um, going to work on my PhD. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe update you on that. Actually, that also leads me into one other thing I want to throw out there. For you dads out there, I want to get some feedback, um, for, especially for those dads who had to multitask when their kid was in the NICU. I want to hear back from you. What did you do to help you multitask while your child was in the NICU? Uh, just, leave a, just leave a message at the bottom of this uh, Facebook post, or you can hit us up on Twitter for Connected NICU, or you can go to our website and send us a, a message there at ConnectedNICU.com. So last week we talked about what a father can do for uh, his wife or significant other while they're in the NICU. And then the week before that, we talked about what the father can do for himself to support himself while uh, the child is in the NICU. And today we want to talk about what the father can do to support the child while he's in the NICU. And I mean, the list of things can go on and on and on. And I, for the sake of time, I just picked three, just three that we're going to talk about tonight. And the first one is see your child as your child. <clears throat> and when I was going through the grieving process, I met other men who had lost their their children at an early age and they were telling me something that I found quite interesting which was that in order for them to get through that process some of them chose not to see their child as a child and that kind of left me a little baffled but after talking to them and discussing I actually saw why they were able to do that um, my my wife and I we understood what a NICU was so when they put our son in the NICU, we, we, we knew what we were walking into. But here's the kicker. When we saw him in the NICU, it still, it still had an effect that regardless of how mentally prepared we were, it still took its toll on us because here's our child and you've whisked him away and you put him in this box the see-through box with all these lights and there's all these wires and tubes and everything. And we couldn't touch him. As a matter of fact, when you touched him, uh, because he was born so young, uh, uh, physical touch actually hurt him. So he, his, our touch was actual pain. So it, it challenged us in a way that um, only being a parent can, can, can um, relate to. And that is, how do I become a parent to someone that I can't touch, that I can't treat as my child in a traditional setting? Um, and so one of the things that we had to do while we were there was we had to make sure that that was our kid, regardless of what the situation looked like. That was our child. That was our kid. For me personally, it was really tough while our son was in the NICU because <clears throat> most of the time when I went to go visit him during the middle of the day, especially when I was by myself, if I was there by myself, almost every time I was there by myself, that was when mothers were coming in and they could actually touch their baby and pick them up and take them to go nurse and everything. So I spent a lot of time while we were in the NICU watching parents touch and hold their child while I could not. And I had to keep reminding myself that 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 child is not my child by traditional means. That child is my child because it is. And regardless of whether I can touch him or not, that's my kid. And that it's not a thing. It's not an object. It's it's my child. And you can uh, you can ask my wife about this. I, I had a little running joke. They had the um, the jaundice lights set up on his uh on his incubator and they look like like little strobe lights and so i took a picture of it and they had the little shades over his eyes and so i told her i said hey he's having his first uh hip-hop concert right there in the nicu 
So uh, we would go in and I will have like music playing through my cell phone or whatever. Or I'd listen to music before I walked in. And uh, I would talk to him like, you know, we were on stage or whatever. That was a big deal to me. We were interacting with one another as father and son. So I think that's really important there because there can be a lot of things in between you and your child that keeps you from being able to interact with them like in a traditional setting. And that can be very difficult. Um, but as long as you continue to see your child as your child, um, you continue to have that connection that can only be explained by, by parents. Uh, the second thing that I would say that a father can do to support their child while they're in the NICU is become part of the process. I have a background in anatomy and physiology, which I tried to keep a secret while I was in the NICU because the doctors and the nursing staff would be talking about things around me. And sometimes they didn't think that I knew what they were saying. And so I just stayed silent and I listened to what they were saying and I was like, oh, okay, so that's what they're about to do next. Um, it told me how to think. It told me how to pray. It told me what I was going to tell family on the outside of, of what to do. Um, and then one day, one of my students came bopping in and was like, oh my gosh, it's Professor Nixon. Oh my gosh. Hey, how's it going? And they were like, what do you mean, Professor Nixon? Oh, yeah, that's the guy that taught me anatomy and physiology. So then everybody's attitude started changing. And um, it was good. I think that was a really good situation to happen because they started including me in conversations. So it went from having conversations around me to having conversations including me. And when we started doing that, the healthcare process was a collaborative process instead of just people coming in, doing their thing and leaving. And that made me feel like I was more of a part. Some people don't want that. Some people just, they're like, hey, just do what you gotta do and, and get back to me when you get past the next phase. Uh, we weren't like that. We were like, hey, you know, what, what can we do? There has to be something that we can do. The hospital staff told us that they had not met a, a, a pair of parents that had been that involved in the process. Uh, and that had been there that much with their child. Um, and I don't know how true that is or was, but we took it to heart. <clears throat> you want to become part of the process. There's always something you can do. There might be some information about your family that the healthcare staff needs to know so that it can help them in the treatment of your child. Or it could be something that they need to make decisions on and they don't want to make the decisions without you. That's very important. So you can be a part of that process. And when you're a part of that process, you're a part of the process of taking your child home. You're a part of the process of healing your child. And that's going to mean a lot, especially when your child comes home. Uh, that's that's going to be uh, a process and an experience that no one can take away from you. And you'll share that with your child forever. Uh, the third thing is uh, set the atmosphere. You, you have to set the atmosphere. And this one, I, I don't talk about much at all, but I figured, hey, we're doing Father Fridays, so somebody's dad has got to keep it real, right? Um, when I got into the NICU, I was really naive. I, was, I counted how many babies were in the NICU, and I, there was a baby whose area was right across from our son, and uh, they said, oh, that baby, I came in one day and the baby was gone. And they said, yeah, the, the family came to get the baby to take it home. One day you'll do the same thing with yours. So I was under the impression that as babies were not there the next day, that they were all going home. I didn't realize that some of the babies around our son, they weren't going home with their parents. They didn't live. Um, and that, that was amazing. Um, however, regardless of how dark a time in the NICU it was, we tried to do our best to make it a family environment around the space of our child. Every NICU is set up differently and our NICU was set up, um, in an extremely efficient manner. I mean, as far as an engineering mind is concerned, it was very efficient. 
However, even the nursing staff would talk about how, you know, it's set up in an efficient manner, but it doesn't feel like a place where there's hope. It just felt like it was this place where it was an end of the line and you were just kind of crossing your fingers. And so we didn't want it to feel that way or in that space. So in that space, we had a great, we had, we had two nurses who were excellent and um, both of them made things for our son. So they made these posters for him. They made these panoramas for him. Um, our area had, was, was well lit. It, we had all kinds of things. We brought books for him. They had books on, on site for him. We brought some toys up there. Um, I would hijack extra chairs, <laughs> put them around it. Uh, you know, whatever we needed to have around the space for it to simulate a, a baby room, uh, for a lack of better words. So we wanted to set that atmosphere because we knew that if it looked like a baby's room, it would make us think about his room back home and it would give us that hope uh, to bring him home because everybody's in the NICU for a different amount of time. We were there for a few weeks. I've heard of people there being there for months at, on, on end and every day in the NICU is a long day. There is no such thing as a short day in the NICU. Um, I, I've never heard of that. I've never heard a doctor say that. And I haven't heard a nurse say that either. No such thing as a short day. Every day in the NICU is a long day because it's another day that your child doesn't get to go home with you. It's, um, there was one hour out of the 24 hours that we couldn't be in there with our son. And that was at midnight. And so from midnight to 1 a.m., they made all the parents leave and they had a mandatory staffing meeting to talk about their game plan for the babies in uh, both sides of the NICU because <clears throat> they had a NICU one and they had a NICU two and our baby was in NICU one. And, uh, that, that was really important, very important to set that atmosphere because all those bells and all those whistles and all those lights, um, it can have a PTSD level effect on an individual. As a matter of fact, that's something that we're going to talk about in the coming weeks. We're going to talk about um, the after effects of being in a NICU. Try to get a little transparent. I don't. I haven't really heard too many guys talk about their experience, how they came out of the NICU. I, I've heard guys talk about what their wives went through coming out of the NICU, but, um, that can be a pretty traumatic experience and hopefully people will be able to talk about it, open up, get a little healing and, uh, build a little camaraderie. So with that being said, uh, we're going to sign off for tonight. Remember, uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, definitely go visit the website, read the blog, keep up with things that are going on with Connected NICU. If you have any topics that you want us to discuss in Father Fridays, please leave them uh, in, the, in, the, in a post below. Shoot us an email or, or send us a message over Twitter, and we'd love to hear from you. So that's it. We're signing off. Have a good night.